So the fishing at Lake Mendocino did not uh, turn out well for us. Uh, the best that we caught were uh, bluegills. So uh, we had a, a two-day camping trip over there and we are on our way home. So what we decided to do is to stop by at Lake Sonoma and check out the, uh, the uh, Don Clausen Fish Hatchery. And uh, we wanted to learn a little bit more about co salmon, chinook, uh, as well as uh, uh, nat naturally spawned trout. So anyway, uh, we're gonna go inside and have a talk with uh, one of the volunteers, and I'm sure she'll give us some information about that. So we're also gonna go see the babies and see what happens there. All right, uh, we've never been to a fish hatchery before, and hopefully we can show you guys some information about it. So stay tuned. And when it comes to you guys, when does it come? Does it come as this one? When it comes, it's a three-foot fish. Oh, it's a big old fish? It's a fish. <laughs> okay. And the they fish, come, that's when they come back. When they come back, they're three feet long, 30 inches to 36 inches. They're three feet long. There's males and females. They come in. We take the eggs from the female and the sperm from the males, and we mix it together because they're So you, just you milk them, right? Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, when you say they come to you, they actually swim up to the... They the swim right Oh, okay. The so it's not like they came in a truck. No. <laughs> it's a ride, right? Uh, they were born here. So when we started this in 19... Um, 1781. The hatchery started operation in 1981. And the fish have been coming here for three to four thousand years. Perhaps longer. We know that the palm whalers homes are here on Dry Creek and they were here catching the fish. So we know that this has been going on for thousands of years. So when the fish came in, they met the dam and the fish hatchery, yeah. and we started doing it by hand and raising the fish. Mm -hmm. So there's about 600,000 little fish that we are raising, and we keep them until they're about 12 months old. So middle of February <laughs> to middle of March, we will start putting those year-old fish into Dry Creek. They will swim out to the ocean. They will come home between the ages of four and five and they'll do it all over again. So every year we have fish coming home because they've been out in the ocean all that time. And so how long do they live in the ocean or do they come every year? They go out when they're one, they come home when they're five. They swim to Alaska, around towards Japan and across the Pacific. So they swim between four and 5,000 miles while they're gone. They can go out again and they'll be gone for about two years. So an adult steelhead can spawn up to three times. So do they come back here only to spawn? So this on their, is their journey home. around because, they won't spawn. Because they've, Im home. they've imprinted here already, right? Off the water. And any genetic offsprings after that, same they thing? They, they know where to come back? They will come here because they've lived in fresh water for a year. They imprint on that fresh water and every stream is different. It's like oh. they always so come back have home. you, are, are any of the fish like have... the butterflies yeah, butterfly. in yeah. Mexico. Have any of the fish have tracking on them as far as... We do that on some of the coho, uh, the salmon that are here because they're so endangered and so few of them. We have put trackers on those. We don't usually track the steelhead. We get between 4,000 and 6,000 steelhead home every year. Send out on our stream 350,000 of our 600,000. We go up to Lake Mendocino in front of that dam and send out 250,000 out of that 600,000 that we are raising here. Wow. So all of the fish from this stream and up and down the Russian River have the same genes. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Russell. <laughs> All right, come on. Let's go see the hatchery. This is what I want to catch. There's something this big. There we go. That's what I want to catch. Hey, Mom. All right. See the sign that says Sturgeon Crossing. All right. We are pretty much, I think, behind the dam. This is the big dam from uh, Lake Sonoma, and this is a 
Uh, looks like an overlooked bridge. You can see some of the hatcheries. There you go. Fish. So you can actually see some of those fish and some of these troughs. There they are, of course, so that they're protected from predators. I'm sure that's temperature controlled water. Okay, so as part of this uh, tour of the hatchery, we get to watch a video first, okay? So we'll see what's happening right here. Completing yet another cycle of life for their species. For centuries, migrating coho salmon and steelhead trout returned to spawn in Dry Creek and its tributaries. In the early 1980s, construction of Warm Springs Dam and the formation of Lake Sonoma resulted in the loss of stream habitat. To compensate for this loss, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers constructed the Don Clausen Fish Hatchery, which is operated under contract by the California Department of Fish and Game. A fish ladder constructed near the base of the dam allows the fish to swim through a series of watery steps in order to overcome the difference in elevation to the hatchery. The journey comes to an end when the fish swim into a holding tank inside the hatchery. Following the weekly schedule, hatchery personnel will then crowd the fish into a channel. We're in the middle of steelhead spawning. What we have here is a mechanical crowd that brings in the fish that end up in this channel. These fish have migrated up from the ocean. They've entered in a dry creek. So once they get into this channel, they're trapped and they can't get back up. The reason they come into the channel is because they're interested in spawning here at this facility. This is where they came from and this is where they're going to come back to. Carbon dioxide is uh, released into the water using a diffuser plate on the bottom. It releases carbon dioxide bubbles into the water, anesthetizes the fish in the same manner so that we can handle them and so that the fish don't get hot. Once they're in this basket here and tranquilized, we'll bring them up onto the table. We'll sort the fish according to sex and degree of ripeness. Today, since it's spawning day, we're going to select certain fish that uh, are ripe and ready to spawn. The fish are sorted according to species, sex, and degree of sexual maturation. Those that are ready will be artificially spawned by hatching personnel. After the fish has been sedated, they are injected with air, and it pushes the eggs from the cavity into the pan. And then uh, once they're done spawning, they're put into a recovery tank where they'll recover. And once they've recovered, they'll go back down to dry creek and then eventually back out to the ocean. Since steelhead trout will not die after spawning, they are released back to dry creek from one of the tubes on the sorting table so they can begin their trip back to the ocean. Fish not ready for spawning are returned to the holding park where they are kept until mature. I'll uh, rinse the eggs in salt solution to get the rest of the ovarian fluid off of them. And at this point, we'll add sperm. We're adding sperm to the eggs. Probably about 10 and 12,000 eggs in here. 
then I'm going to put them in an iodine solution which will disinfect the eggs so if there's any bad bacteria or anything on the eggs it'll kill it and they'll sit here for about 30 minutes. The fertilized eggs are then transferred into a cylinder where incubation occurs. A constant fresh water supply provides the developing embryos with fresh oxygen. After we spawn the fish, the eggs, it takes the eggs about 16 days to eye up. From there, it takes them another 15 days to hatch. What we call eye up is when you can see the eyes on the egg itself. From the time they uh, get fertilized to the time they hatch 31 days. This batch here just hatched today. These are a week old. Right now, they're feeding on their uh, yolk sac. They don't eat until they swim up, which will probably be another two weeks. Okay, what we're doing now is we're going up to the next level of stage of the fish, uh, which is the swim up stage. And uh, once they swim up, we start feeding them. Uh, this feed here is a protein, fat, and just what the fish needs to survive. Okay, we take 16 spawns throughout the season. We spawn our fish every Thursday, so each each stage is a week apart. After about six weeks in the start tanks, the young fish, now called fingerlings, are transferred to the outside raceways. In three to four months, the steelhead are marked by removing a portion of the fin. This will identify them as being spawned at the Don Clawson Fish Hatchery. Okay, what we're doing here is uh, clipping the adipose fin, and that's the nipple of the fisherman, and it's a hatchet fish. We clip a fin that doesn't have any rays on it. It won't grow back. We'll do about 20,000 a day. The whole crew are working. When they reach an average size of about 6 inches, or 20 fish per pound, they are classified as earlings. We have to bring all the fish to this end of the pond so that they're concentrated enough to that pond can pick them up. And what it'll do is it'll uh, take what that food and come up into our uh, big pump over here <laughs> and uh, separate the fish from the water. Basically all we want are fish in the truck. We want as little water as possible. That's so that uh, we know exactly the weight of the fish. We don't want uh, to add the weight of the water in with the fish. So that way we can get an accurate count of how many fish we're actually planting. Feelings have grown to the proper size. They are transported by tanker and released into dry fish to start their season. So right now I'm just uh, releasing these uh, steelheads in the dry fruit. Uh, using the crew to make sure that all the fish get out of the truck. In two to four years, these young fish born in the hatchery will leave the ocean, swim up the river and dry creek, return to the hatchery, and repeat the cycle of replenishing their own species as their parents did before them. The hatchery method of artificial propagation is one way to supplement the natural spring losses. Many environmental, climatic, and social changes throughout the Russian River Basin, as well as the entire Pacific Coast, have led to a decline of steelhead and salmon population. The prime purpose of the fish hatchery was to mitigate and enhance the resources lost as a result of the construction of the dam. We are optimistic that the salmon and steelhead populations may be required to some level of what they once were. But this can only be accomplished through habitat restoration and by environmental education of generations to come through the efforts of hatcheries like the Don Clausen Fish Hatchery. Okay, so after the video, we're going to go play this game that says name that fish okay i'm gonna go ahead and uh show you guys the actual picture of the uh, fish itself and i'm gonna go ahead and read the description and then from there we will guess all right so this will be the first fish it says this species take two forms one migrates to the ocean and one stays in its home stream 
The stay at home is called a rainbow <laughs> trout. It's often difficult to tell between the two, but the ocean run, uh, migrating fish grows more quickly and it's larger. Cali in California, it averages 10 pounds. So the choice is Chinook or Steelhead. Which one do you think? Well, steelhead. I think it's Steelhead. Steelhead? Steelhead. Okay, we're going to go with Steelhead. And the answer is? Steelhead trout. We're going to move on to the next one. We're going to go to this one over here. All right. Can I right. read? Go ahead. All right. So also known as silver salmon, these are the most adaptable salmon. They adjust easily to hatchery life or to non anadromous life in a landlocked lake. Popular as a game fish, they are fast, strong, and a magnificent jumper. By the time they reach, oh, by the time they return to spawn, they weigh 12 to 17 pounds. All right, so the choice is between Chinook salmon or steelhead. Well, we already know that that's the steelhead. It's not coho. So. I think it's coho. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. There's three options. It's supposed to be coho or Chinook or steelhead. Oh, so what is it? You think it's coho? How about you? Coho? Chinook. All right, so pull down the answer. It's oh. coho salmon. Uh -oh. All right, so we're going to move on to the last one. So I guess this will be an easier one. Okay, ready? Oh, no, we're gonna okay. This is the largest Pacific salmon. Its common name came from an Indian tribe of the same name, which depended on the salmon returning to the Columbia River. These fish are also known as king, tai, and spring salmon. They commonly average about 20 pounds a uh, record fish weighing 88 pounds have been caught in California waters. Is this a Chinook, Coho, or Steelhead? Well, this should be an easy one because uh, we already know that that's Coho and this so, is, is this steelhead? steelhead. No, this is Chinook. <laughs> Chinook. Yep. It's Chinook. And the answer is Chinook. Chinook. So, we're going to move on. So, thank you for playing. Name that fish. Fish ladders and walk through these doors to see the fish jump. So here we go. So check out the fish. Improvements were made to the channel to enhance it. The enhancements were made possible by a team of biologists, volunteers, friends of the park, and a contractor. As you walk along, ask yourself, what can I do to improve the uh, habitat near me? All right. What can you do to improve the habitat near you? You can not throw trash on the ground. What? Gravel is key to wild spawning. A large amount of gravel is added for an ideal place for steelhead to build their nests called reds. Their eggs are protected in the small crevices between the stones. The eggs need a constant supply of cool water and oxygen, which is provided by the fast moving water over the bed. Oh of yeah, of course. They need rocks, river rocks. River so rock the, casino? Gravel. River rocks, gravels. So this is a nice paved path that they've done here at the Don Clausen, so we can actually walk towards the ladders. Here is a nice stream on this side. Okay, it makes for, I'm sure, a pleasing viewing pressure. A fish okay. rest stop. Do you see the U-shaped rock weir in the stream? Oh wait, am I saying it right? Weirs? Yeah. Weirs mimic natural boulder steps and create a slight pond upstream and a deeper pool below. This pool is called a score pool. The churning water absorbs um, oxygen. This is called a riffle pool sequence. The young steelhead uh, find food among the riffles. The deeper pools with the slower water provide protection and resting sites for the steelheads. Cool. Did I say that right? Yeah, sure. Scour. So scour or it's scour more. pool. Scour. So it's so these. Like they rest here so and it's, they jump up, right? Yeah, so it's these little oh, cool. things, gain speed, and then they go up further. Oh, so it's like a natural ladder type of thing. Oh, I'm sorry. It's called a scour pool. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Cut 
cover means safety. Logs and boulders also help slow down water when the stream is high and flowing fast. The logs, roots, wads, and boulders that are placed along the streams provide score scour pools, which provides overhead cover from fish hunters, shade, and are a good source of fish food, which are insects. Give me the next huh. one, Tommy. So as you can see here, this provides a really nice, nice cover for the fish to go upstream and go up the ladder. So I guess when there's a lot of water here, they start to, the fish will jump up, huh? Yeah. Oh, we got to come back here during the fall. Yeah. Oh, oh when we visit Kyoto. On, ah. <laughs> on a Thursday when they... Yeah. On a Thursday. All right, so what's the next, next, are you okay to carry that, Sam? I'm good, I'm good. Fish ladders are built to provide a way for fish to overcome the change in elevation. This climb marks the end of the adult uh, steelhead's journey before entering the hatchery. During migration, during the migration season, you can see the steelhead leaping up step by step, displaying their strong drive to return home and spawn the next generation. Oh, that's cool. Ooh. That's cool. It's like I want to fish for steelheads. <laughs> what do we? Fish it's barbless and it's catch and release. Oh, ah, what? You can't eat them. They said they're endangered. What no, that's coho. Oh, the coho. And they clip them. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah, just okay. We're gonna have to uh, watch the video yeah. again. <laughs> Wait, this is it. Now we gotta walk back. Ah. Oh, so this is the ladder. Yeah. Oh, there's like no water in it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so oh, are they really? No, it's water. <laughs> Oh nope. no, there are fish! Where? Look, right oh, there! Yeah, there is one. I can't see, I'm blind. It's, it's yeah, I think one. I know what you're talking about, Tommy. Because yep. I saw it from all the way down there. Yeah. Oh yeah, I see it again. Oh, yeah. It keeps on, uh, there it is again. Look, they can control the height of the ladders. You see him? Oh yeah. So when the water is high, they can, raise it, they can raise it up. So then you can see them. I bet you they can even jump oh, we'll as see. far Go up. From low to high. I know. That's what I'm saying. Look at the notches. But it gets higher and higher and higher. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So it allows the fish to go up, 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 right? Because they built this, they also made a pathway blocking that so that they can come over here. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Of course. All right. Well. Well, let's go. Okay, now let's see if we can feed the hatchlings. So yeah. remember they said you can All right, it says here, raceway and go through these double doors to feed the fish. So off we go. We're going to go and feed the fish. Okay, so we finally made it down the uh, raceway uh, where, you know, the public can feed the fish. And they've got these uh, raceway troughs that has a lot of fish in them. Go so check it out. That's amazing. Hey Ray, eh? it's gotta be the easiest way to catch fish. Yeah, you just gotta go. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that, so much fish down there. 
There's definitely hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fish. Let's see if we can zoom it in a little bit more. There we go. A lot of fish out there. Look at that. Getting more of the fish feed. Oh, are we out? Yeah, is that what so it we is? can feed the fish. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go feed the fish. So as you can see, this raceway extends all the way to the other side, all the way over there. Okay, and each and one of these raceway has fish. And the public can hang out in the side and there's usually a gumball machine out there. where you can actually get the feed. Right now we're gonna go get more feed so we can feed the fish. Let's see what the sign says. Salmon and steelhead stay in these ponds until they're ready for release. Chinook are ready in a few months. Coho and steelhead remain about a year. Uh, automatic feed, uh, feeders spray fish food into the ponds. If you want to feed fish yourself, please don't feed them with anything but the fish food, which you can buy from the vending machine. That's cool. And here is the vending machine. It oh, says fish food. And they're going to replenish it with feed. Wait, hold on, Janet. Hold on, hold on. No, I just want to see. Hold on. How often does the feed get fed? Uh, fed? How often does, does the fish the get fed? Oh, these ones in here only get fed every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And what are the intervals of feeding? Um, we work uh, eight hour days, 7.30 to 4. Feeding about six times a day. Every hour? Or uh, two hours? For the most part, yeah. Until, until they get uh, planted? What's that? Until they get planted? somewhere yeah, like all these ones are smaller those get fed every day these ones here um and those ones in those pond are way bigger they only get fed three times a week three times a week okay so here's my family uh they've actually gotten some feed and they're gonna try and feed the fish right now okay so go ahead and two and they're ready and here we go ah! as you can see the fish are going nuts. Or you can just, just like... The food, they're only allowed to feed the fish the food that's designed for their consumption. This is the steel head that's being fed by Tommy. And there they go. That looks so cool. <laughs> we were told that this uh, raceways here are only three feet deep. Okay, and apparently that that's the fun part, right, Tommy? Yeah. Is that fun? Is that fun, Ray? Yeah. Yeah, was that fun? Uh, <laughs> Is it worth it? Yes. <laughs> definitely. Def <laughs> definitely come and see uh, Don Clausen. So especially for the little kids, uh, they would love, I'm for sure, to see the, uh, feeding the uh, fish. Look at all this fish.
Eventually these steel heads will be released into the uh, creeks uh, around this area. So eventually they will make it out to the ocean. That's the idea here. So we can uh, continue to replenish the, uh, the fish that's uh, uh, gonna come back. And we were told that no more than 10% comes back to uh, the original place where they were born. And so these fish are imprinted uh, on the water here at the uh, Russian River. Looks like that is the imprint that the Department of Fish and Life, Wildlife wants to uh, give these fish. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fish in this area. Okay, so this is what the feed looks like. All right, they're definitely pellets looking. And they're pretty small. I wonder if they swell up when they fall in the water. What does it smell like, Ray? Honestly, yeah, dog food. <laughs> really? Yeah, like dog food or like the fish flakes that you put in like, uh... Yeah, it just smells like fish food, <laughs> honestly. I don't see what's so special about it. So, I'm sure they are uh, made specifically for steelhead. Bus. Because when you throw it in, they go crazy. Yep, there you go. It looks like birds when so you throw it in. I wonder, I wonder if eventually these uh, fish get full. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot of them, so I'm sure some of them will stay hungry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Janet, is that... I watch them. When are you, like, two years old? They're pretty fast. Once it once it drops, once it drops, they know, right? I mean, once it drops, they already know. They can tell. Yeah. And I and I wonder if uh, that food even drops to the ground. So these nettings are uh, used to uh, protect the entire. Uh, facility uh, so for birds and things like that and other predators so they Got don't it. get onto the actual uh, fish raceway so some of these uh, fish actually uh, have uh, bite marks on them and that's probably they say that there's some otters that get in every once in a while they fish them out and they toss them back out into the pond so what do they do yeah right seems like this uh, pond is not uh, this raceway is not as uh, crowded, yeah. crowded. Right. I wonder they do that for size control I wonder for size control right hey Ray maybe the less crowding uh, allows them to grow bigger oh, you're right. yep come on Tom all right off we go and we're going back in. Okay guys, uh, that is pretty much the end of our tour here at Don Clausen <laughs> of Fish Hatchery. Fish hatchery. Okay, so uh, we may be unsuccessful in uh, catching the fish that we uh, are targeting for this weekend at Lake Montesino, but at least what we're successful in seeing are seeing actual uh, steelhead trout and we were able to feed them. And yeah. judging from uh, the excitement in my family's uh, faces and smiles in their faces, it was definitely an enjoyable time. So we highly recommend that uh, you folks out there, our viewers, so come and visit your local uh, fish hatchery and go and feed the fish, whatever species are there. So anyway, as always, 
come fish with us sometime. So see ya.